Hi there, hello my beautiful world. This is Dina from dinahews.com and I am here with a very special video where I, I have drawn a tarot spread for the Mars square Pluto thing that's going exact. So I've got a sort of past, present and future lineup over here. So this is, this is all the past event that we've been experiencing. And uh, this is the present and this is the future. So let's get straight to understanding the astrology of Mars square Pluto. So Mars is in rulership in Aries right now as we speak. And 2020 is a very Martian year because uh, Mars is going to retrograde. And this is a, a retrograde we feel most intensely. And if we look at Pluto, Pluto entered Capricorn in 2008 and Pluto is the agent, it's a nuclear reactive agent of death and transformation. So uh, today is Wednesday, the day of Mercury. So I have for you a very special Tina Heels Mercury candle, as you can see over there. And I have seven day candles for each day and, you know, uh, which uh, basically has the colors and the sense of the planetary deities. So uh, when you book a reading with me, you not only book an astrological reading, but you learn to connect with the planetary diamonds. So today on the day of Mercury, we have a green candle and uh, the, the past significations if you look at the spread it it is very interesting because there is a sort of medicine that is available to us then one that is like medicine but and then we have the moon the moon is about tuning into intuition to our psychic awareness however the moon could also mean secrets and the answer to this is again, uh, this actually pertains to the signification of the moon, which is about menstrual cycles, the clearance of, you know, past life karma, because the moon is also an embodiment of our personal mysteries. So once we talk about Mars in Aries, it's about asserting dominance. It's about power, hegemony and control. So uh, Aries is the first sign of the zodiac. It is ruled by Mars. It is dry. It is hot, very hot. As Mars is exceedingly hot, known as the lesser malefic. And Aries is male. If you look at which planet is exalted in Aries, it is the sun. So you immediately understand that Aries is all fire, ruled by Mars, exaltation, uh, is sun so immediately we see sun uh, we see that mars and aries is somehow illuminating uh, the condition of aries and squaring pluto pluto as i said is hades the lord of the underworld the netherworld the unconscious so squares are 90 degree angles and squares bring about intense intense uh metamorphosis they're like diamonds being formed so it's a painful process but it's necessary so uh capricorn is cold it's dry it's female and both these signs are bestial uh there are a few bestial signs in traditional astrology leo is a bestial sign any um leaf any symbol of any particular sign that has an animal is a bestial sign so immediately you understand that these signs are more connected to the age or the animalistic part of us. So in a very refined, sophisticated society, the animalistic impulses are frowned upon. But the Mars significations of Aries is equally important as the significations that Pluto is bringing out through Capricorn because Pluto is a higher octave of Mars. So uh, if you look at Capricorn, you see that Mars is exalted in Capricorn. And immediately you understand that the energy is very, very Martian because uh, Mars has an upper hand over here because Mars is in rulership and is squaring Pluto in a sign in which he's exalted. 28 degrees of Mars happens to be the exact exaltation degree 
uh, sorry, 28 degrees of Capricorn. But Mars does very well in Saturn ruled Capricorn. And Saturn is the greater malefic, Mars is the lesser malefic. So both these signs being bestial, the square is going to bring out our animalistic impulses, which is leading straight to a new moon in the bestial sign of Leo. So I will be coming up with my astrological update on the Leo a new moon. So stay tuned for that. But let us try and understand Aries. Saturn is in fall in Aries because Saturn is exalted in Libra. And Aries being the polarity of Libra, Saturn is in fall. So that means there's no expression of uh, restriction when it comes to the Aries energy signature. It's all about rampant uh, sometimes horrific growth that is why saturn cannot stand being in aries it is a sort of energy signature that saturn is not used to he's in fall in this sign and if you look at uh, who is in fall in capricorn you see jupiter is in fall in capricorn because jupiter is exalted in uh, cancer the polarity of capricorn so immediately you see that the Two great bodies, two great luminaries, one the greater benefic, one the greater malefic, is directly in play over here because both these planets are in fall. In these two signs that we are talking about, Mars and Aries going head to head with Pluto in Capricorn. So we have we will see power struggles, confrontations, but this could also mean a push or a motivation. Jealousies could sprout up because that is what Pluto does in Mars. So now we are going to look at some of the significations, ancient significations of Mars and try and understand how this energy is actually very disruptive because even the fact that we had the huge blast at Lebanon, I have not discussed the astrology yet, but I will write about it and speak about it in my update. But I just wanted to say that the Comet Neowise is of the energy signature of Mars. So immediately you understand that there was going to be some kind of explosion, some, something to do with fire. Okay, some devastation that had to do with fire. And what was this? It was negligence that made this happen. So we immediately look at uh, uh, how Betelgeuse, the fixed star in the constellation of Orion, was actually a key player in the blast at Lebanon, right? So, but before that, I want you to understand that uh, we've had very volatile astrology. So Pluto Mars square happens three times. In a few hours, Mars will square Pluto for the first time in the skies. And this is going to bring about tremendous volatile activities. So looking at the significations of Mars, we see wars, plundering, screams, violence, whoring, the loss of property, banishment, exile, alienation from parents. So again, we can see generational trauma being played out because uh, Pluto's also genetic memory, gen genetic um, understanding, okay, because Pluto deals with the unconscious. So, capture, death of wives, abortion. So, yes, Mars, where Pluto can have a signification for that. So, Mars is also love affairs, marriages, the loss of goods. So, again, marriage, love affairs with the square to Pluto can uh, result in either breakup or complete transformation. So, we also can see violent shootouts with this energy. I hope that doesn't happen, but we will definitely see verbal abuse, fighting, confrontation, maybe lawsuits. Uh, that could make or break people. Slashings. Do not forget that Mars significations include slashings as well as, you know, bleeding, as well as screams, banditry, robbery, uh, quarrels amongst friends. So there could be quarrels with friends when uh, Pluto and Mars. And don't forget that Pluto is a higher octave of Mars. So what I see in this spread is a lot of transformation, but the necessary medicine has been afforded to us through various 
uh, difficult experiences. So before I get into telling you more about the spread, let me tell you a bit about how Neowise is going to, is, is really, really very active with uh, this very particular energy signature of 2020 and uh, I know it's been a chaotic year but believe me it does not get easier it is going to get very very intense uh, until we see complete transformation because that is uh, the ultimate uh, I think the ultimate goal of both Pluto and Mars because through past struggles, through confrontations, we can understand uh, change. We can embrace change. Because if you look at both these planets, Mars and Pluto are both associated with the natural eighth house of the zodiac and that the natural sign, which is Scorpio, that uh, deals with the eighth house of the zodiac. So we immediately see a very destructive a tendency with both these planets which i'm sure will play out with people who are tuning into the lower vibrations but mars square pluto gives tremendous transformation so you have to look to the houses where this uh, where this is taking place in your nib chart you can always book a reading with me for more clarification because i tend to synthesize very many different systems and give you a reading like none other. So let us understand the present moment. So we have Yama, the god of death, which immediately connects to Saturn. And we have Saturn in fall in the sign of Aries. And I said everything is about Mars right now. Okay, although Saturn is very, very much in rulership in Capricorn, he's retrograde. And... Uh, Mars is preparing to grow, go retrograde this whole year. So we are going to see a lot of changes. And I don't mean uh, easy changes. I mean shockwaves, okay? Things like uh, Earth changes. We're already speaking about the Saturn and the Uranus square that's going to take shape all of 2021. Heavy tectonic shifts, heavy earthquakes, a tremendous changes in the way we experience reality, the way we perceive things, the way we interact with things, and even in our interpersonal uh, connections. Look, Saturn is literally constrictions, and Aquarius is large groups of people. So as Saturn went into uh, Aquarius, we immedi immediately saw the lockdown being enforced. So there is something about how we interact with uh, society and Aquarius also deals with innovation. So Saturn and Aquarius do not forget has maximum essential dignity. So immediately we have death over here with Yama, the god of death. This is the present moment. So there is going to be a lot of change, a lot of shift because I have mentioned to you time and again that Comet Neowise is activating the fixed star in the constellation of Orion called Betelgeuse, which is a malefic. Okay, and Betelgeuse is of uh, the very uh, nature of Mars. Okay, it's, it's, a, it's a very, very red, bright star. You cannot miss it if you go sky gazing. It is in the shoulder of Orion. It's literally uh, positioned at 2829 of Gemini in the tropical zodiac. And uh, it is very easy to recognize in the sky. Okay. Now, Orion is actually Osiris of the Egyptians. It is from the, the very myth of Betelgeuse that we have Osiris. Okay. And uh, now that Betelgeuse is active with uh, uh, Neowise activating the perihelion, we have a lot of um, disruption because Betelgeuse is volatile and it is about the ability to, to resurrect oneself. Again, we see this being played out with Mars where Pluto resurrection is the theme of the R awakening to what is coming because even this being Yama and death together and this is literally Mars square Pluto 
And as a clarifier for that, we have flexibility within structure. So we need to understand the value of human connection. I think we, we've understood that with COVID-19 and uh, the alienation we feel. But this is again a part of society. I told you very many times that society is overall in the age of technocracy. It's going to get more and more alienated from true human uh, connection. Okay? Because Aquarius is not great with human connection. Yes, it's a humane sign, but it is uh, more of a planner. So immediately you have to look to uh, Saturn to bring in and foster the, the sense of community. So let us understand uh, the nature of Neovice. So even when we saw that, um, if you look at the eclipse chart, right, the 2020 uh, partial lunar eclipse, we can see that the planet that was closest to the eclipse was Mars. So Mars was immediately seen hurling uh, his harmful rays to both the luminaries, the two lights, the sun and the moon. So immediately we see from then on a very Mars signature, okay? And Mars, uh, on the application of a waxing moon to Mars, it basically brings about conflict, combustion, explosion, volatility. So this is something that, that I feel is going on because if we use uh, the traditional method of analyzing how long uh, an eclipse effects last, we see that this eclipse, this effect will last for four months and two days. So this is very much in the time frame for this uh, blast at Lebanon to happen. And we can see that uh, this is because of Betelgeuse's influence, okay? And uh, this is Mars directly active in this signature, okay? And we've also got, of course, Uranus and Taurus. And uh, now, we've already, I've spoken in my Neobise videos how Neobise was conjunct uh, Betelgeuse when it reached Perihelion. So this immediately tells us that Neowise is, when we study the appearance of Neowise, we see it as a morning or dawn type. Now, quoting from Bernati, Guido Bernati, that which is called morning or dawn is red. And it has a long tail, but less than that of Lord of Escone. And it is the nature of Mars, for it has his significations which if it were to appear out of the part of the east, having its head below it, it signifies battle and the burning of fire and pestilence and famine in the land of Babylon and in the lands of Arabs and the formati and the dryness in Egypt and scarcity of waters. And this will be extended up to the western parts. So we see a lot of uh, Martian significations coming forward with Neowise, which I said, you know, which I already mentioned in the Neowise videos. So you need to go and have a look. Now, so this is about letting things end. What needs to end needs to end. And if you hold on to it, it is not going to bolster this sort of community spirit. Okay, one-on-one -on -one healing. So how do we look to the future for answers? So we see in the deities, these are the deities to work with. So, and these are the messages from the deities and this is the clarification. So we have the goddess Kali, who is the consort of Shani or Saturn, which is again Kronos or Kali is from Kala, which is time herself. So we see immediately the tower moment again Mars. This is the card of Mars who is squaring Pluto as I make this video to help you understand the significations of this explosive energy and we need to regroup. So this is about letting go. I see this as letting go of the structures that we do not need and Mars is going to make sure we do that because that's why he is uh, going to, you know, 
ret going retrograde in Aries and bringing up all of this very Martian significations for us to really work with and integrate and understand. Now, moving towards the future, I can see that the future is not certain because the dark art always brings about a certain uncertainty. But there is a resolution and it is very, very clear to me. If we work together to foster a community spirit, because that is what Saturn will expect of us in Aquarius. Now, speaking of the great conjunction, which is taking part, play, uh, sorry, it's taking, um, it's happening on the 21st of December. And it is the great conjunction happening in Aquarius after 400 years. And this is activating the very critical degree of the zero degrees of Aquarius. So this is a sign where no planet is exalted and where sun is in fall. Many say, okay, you know, Mercury is exalted. But modern astrology ascribes Uranus as the ruler of Aquarius, but traditional astrology holds Saturn as the ruler. Now Saturn and Uranus are completely divergent energies. So speaking about them, it, it oftentimes when you understand Aquarius, you understand the rulerships and uh, the exaltation and the fall. And you can see that this is indeed a very eccentric futuristic era that's dawning on us. Now talking about Mars square Pluto celebrities. Uh, we had Muhammad Ali who had this natal placement. Even Justin Bieber has this. Roman Polanski. So this definitely affected him in the wrong way. So did Harvey Weinstein. So we can see this, this very forceful energy. Even Oprah Winfrey has it. So this is an energy signature that is not easy to assimilate. It is not a walk in the park. But it it gives us great motivation, great push, great strive to get things done in, in all the Aries and Capricorn facets of our life. So if you know which houses these signs fall for you, then you will know uh, a clearer picture of what to expect. Astrologers have been screaming that 2020 is going to be a year like none other. And I've been making videos from 2017 about this theme. And it's finally here. It's This is what we are dealing with. So let's make the best and let's prepare for Mars retrograde, which is coming up in September. And Mars is extended stay in Aries. It's going to definitely change the way we look at existence, the way we look at reality. And also the bestiality being affected, okay? Uh, you must understand that both these signs being bestial and we are leading to this new moon in Leo, which is again bestial. And uh, we've got Uranus and Taurus, which is again bestial. So we've got a, a packed house, They've got a lot of expectation from these signs. So this, these signs are not able to express themselves in the manner that they would like. So oftentimes that creates confusion because Mars cuts and burns. So when Mars is in Aries, it's going to cut and burn like, like you know, no one's business. Like it's his birthright. So what are we going to do with the cuts and burns uh, and Chiron and Black Moon Lilith and all that activation in Aries is going on while we experience the square. So what we can say and Chiron and Uranus both deal with genetic memory. Like I already told you, they both deal with genetic memory. So working with Hecate or Kali, as I can tell you over here, you can book my goddess workshops and goddess initiation workshops uh, where I teach you how to work with the energies, the planetary diamonds and their consorts and the goddesses and and diverse goddesses like uh, Hecate, like Kali, like Diana. So you can book my goddess workshops. They're one-on-one -on -one and I ex detail everything extremely well. 
and suited to what you need and it also has Shakti path and Mantric Kavach and very many things so DM me for that email me or book a reading with me if you want to know more about my process of astrology watch my video on how I interpret the planets and how I uh, insist that you develop a personal relationship with the planets because there is no quick fix there is no uh, gem that can help you these can be yes they can be uh, like the arsenal you have but if you do not prepare yourself if you do not prepare the land the battlefield that is your own psyche then nothing is effective and I will help you prepare that exactly that so email me for more check out my website uh, for more on my merchandise that is a candle that I make it is a special candle for mercury and today is the day of mercury so if you like this candle I have seven candles for each day so if you like this candle uh, on Wednesday and you want to activate communication in your life it'll help you with that if you want to start writing you know lighting this candle and just doing some uh, concentration regime before you start writing can be very effective mercury is especially if you're a Virgo rising especially if you're a Gemini rising okay so that was that for Mars square Pluto in the two cardinal signs. Oh, I did not mention the cardinality of it. Now, cardinal signs bring shift and flux. But the problem with that is they are not flexible and neither are they adaptable. So they have all this change that they deal with, but there is very less flexibility when it comes to cardinality. So that is something we've got to work with. Okay, and Neptune and Pisces being the uh, long stand of dispositor in at home in Pisces, Neptune is showing us just that. So book your reading to understand your physical body, your emotional body, your psychic body, your spiritual body and all of that and to develop a deep personal connection with the planets. Thank you very much and speak soon. Bye.